Welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we have a lot of uh, good people lined up with a lot of good questions. So bring your questions. That's the topic for today. Um, I'm here to answer your questions related to keto or health. And anything that I say, um, check with your competent physician before implementing any of the information. Um, all right, Steve, let's dive right in. All right, let's do it. Let's uh, start uh, with Viz. That's Viz and Victor Viz from India. And uh, he's got some uh, compelling questions for us. Viz, you're on with Dr. Bird. Am I audible? You are. Hey, everybody. Uh, highly pleased to be on this platform where I can connect with all of you and especially Dr. Berg. The, in, uh, con coming to intermittent fasting and uh, 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 connecting to that, my daughter, who's 24 years age now, she had an appendix operation 12 years back due to painkillers and antibiotics which were given quite heavily. Now we understand from the last two, three years that she's going through leaky gut, fatty liver and hormonal imbalance. We want to know because there is no functional doctor in India. We want to know if we can get some very good doctors, functional doctors support with your help and what supplements and what is the corrective, correct dosage so that we can take uh, treatment virtually. That help we need. So we, I thought this is a good platform where mm -hmm. uh, for all these things connected to the intermittent fasting, that alone is not going to think we need to have a treatment with some doctor. So we need and seek your help on this. We need your Okay, so I think uh, there's a couple doctors. Uh, Dr. Fung has a team of doctors that you can go to his site. I think they have um, some nutritionists that work with him that can help you with intermittent fasting. But there's another uh, doctor in Hungary that I did an interview with related to um, leaky gut and intestinal permeability intestinal permeability problems. I, I can't uh, necessarily remember her name, but if you search out my videos, you can watch watch that interview. And then I gave a link underneath in the description so you could find out her website, but she does consultations and you can do that remotely. And and that's really good. Her, her information is really great if you have uh, bowel issues and uh, she has a protocol and you can consult with her and get all the information but it's specifically for those people that have gut issues. Uh, just look, uh, try to do a search. Dr. Berg interviews a uh, doctor from Hungary and uh, get the data from her. Okay. All right. Well, good luck with Thank that. Thank you so much. You bet. And good luck with that, Viz. And why don't you yeah. follow up with us later and let us know how things went. All right. Let's see. Why don't we go immediately, Dr. Berg? Hang on over to social media. And um, so this is a bit of a familiar question. Uh, Kimberly from Facebook, I'm doing keto and IF and my hair is falling out like crazy. And I always preempt your comments, Dr. Berg, with the disclaimer that I have personally inspected Dr. Berg's hair and Karen, his wife's hair, and it's thick and luxurious. So, and they are not kidding uh, to suggest that they're doing keto and intermittent fasting. Poor Dr. Berg just shoveling down bowls full of uh, greens and so on. So I know they're actually doing it. Their hair is great, and so yours can be too if you're doing healthy keto, and Dr. Berg will explain all about that. Well, my toupee looks pretty good, doesn't it? Certainly does. No one tell. knows. Okay. You can't even tell it's a toupee. Um, the first thing I would look at is to make sure she's having enough protein. So just make sure you're having a moderate amount of protein. You don't have to go too much, but that would be the first thing, uh, especially if keto has been um, – making your hair loss worse or into or triggered triggering it. The second thing I would do is I would make sure that you're taking the trace minerals, the trace minerals, every single enzyme, every single protein in your body has um, a mineral to it, a trace mineral. And so these minerals are really essential in, in making sure that proteins are, are working and growing and hair is your protein and skin. So you could be missing a trace mineral because it's real hard to get trace minerals from our foods unless you're consuming something from the sea, as in 
um, seafood, um, or maybe organ meats. Um, so it's a good sea, uh, sea or trace mineral um, supplement would be fine. And then also, of course, the B vitamins. Make sure you're taking all the B vitamins. So from nutritional yeast, you can get them as flakes as well. Um, nutritional, Steve, you should definitely try. Um, I'll have to send you some, but uh, uh, some nutritional yeast flakes. You can put those on your food. It's quite quite tasty because it's a little bit salty. It's very flavorful. I'm I'm scared and, of change. Like do them. Yeah, I'm scared yeah. of change, Doctor Burke. So here's, of course, what I munch on these things. But I'll try the flakes, by golly. But I reserve the right to to dash back to my nutritional yeast tablets, which I crunch up frequently every day. In fact, during the show. Especially for like a, like different recipes, like if you're going to put it in your popcorn, I'm being very sarcastic, you know, put it in other things, but it definitely has an interesting flavor. But those are the, those are some common things I would I would look at if you're losing your hair. Um, I mean, there's a lot more to talk about hair. I've de- recently released a video on hair loss. You should check that out too, because the it's pretty comprehensive. Well, that's terrific. Let's kick things off with, in this case, a true false question. If Dr. Berg, you can see it there. It is. Yeah, true or false, the primary reason for a vitamin D deficiency is your diet. All right, dig into that, folks. And you're either right or wrong with these true or falses, so that kind of puts you under a little bit of less pressure. Let's go back to um, social media. On Crystal from Facebook, is it possible to do healthy keto and IF as a vegan? I think we broached that subject before, too. It's definitely possible. It's more difficult, but it's possible. The problem is trying to keep your carbs low and your fat high. It's difficult, uh, but you can do it. And then uh, you're going to have to add, uh, you know, things like zinc, B12, um, DHA. But you can get that from algae, spirulina. You can get um, various uh, additional things. So uh, I did a video on this. You can watch that and um, attempt to do it that way. But realize that these uh, so-called plant-based diets a lot of times involve consuming a lot of soy and other things that are are crappy. They're low quality. Um, There's been some interesting recent data on, you know, soy and what it does to your liver and what it does to your estrogen levels. Not good. So um, unfortunately, Way too many people are consuming way too much soy. Oh, dear. And it used to be just thought as this, you know, the key health food around the world and everybody bragged about it. Well, it's not getting such good press uh, now. So Ganesh from YouTube, what's the best way to control cravings? I I think just go in the closet and close the door. Is there any more practical ways to overcome Um, that? There's a a way to completely 100% get rid of all cravings. And that has to do with getting your body in first keto adaptation which takes like three to four days and then fat update fat adaptation takes about a month to two months to maybe even three months where you're really converted over to running a different source of fuel and and that way your cravings and your hunger completely go away um if you are on a higher carb diet boy you're going to be miserable all the time because you're going to it's going to be you're going to be craving everything so Um, You don't have to crave things. It's not, you know, in the beginning doing this, I thought it was just certain nutrients you're deficient in. Usually it's not. Uh, The big problem is you're just running on glucose and you're going to be craving carbs like crazy, not just uh, sugar, but uh, these things called refined carbs, as in the breads, the pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes. Interesting. Okay, Kathy from Facebook, um, speaking of junk, uh, what are your thoughts on organic decaf coffee? Is there any benefit to such things? I like that. I like that better than conventional decaf coffee for sure. But yeah, I think a de- organic decaf would be a good good thing to do. Um, yeah, I, it always has a small amount of caffeine, but it's very very tiny. But yeah, that would be a good thing. Absolutely. Wonderful. Make sure it's water um, processed. All right. Remember that. Kathy, water process. And I just want to say about coffee beans. Unfortunately, with coffee beans, it's one of the most heavily sprayed uh, plants out there is the coffee beans. So really try to get your coffee organic. 
Mm, boy, tall order sometimes. I just head over to Starbucks. Anyway, uh, our audience is right on these questions. This was a true false, uh, which read the primary reason for vitamin D deficiency is the diet. 65% of respondents say false. 35%, it's sure it's true. Okay, it's false. Um, it's, it's, in fact, it's a, it's really hard to get, um, it's actually almost impossible to get your vitamin D from the diet, but so you really, you can't get it from the diet. You really can't. Um, you have to get it from the sun or a supplement because, um, it's, it's almost impossible. Now, some people are going to disagree. They're going to say, well, that's not true because the uh, recommended amount of vitamin D is only 600 IUs. Well, I don't know who told you that or what you were thinking about that, but those very small minimum requirements for vitamin D were set up primarily to regulate the absorption of calcium. And they didn't take in consideration all the other benefits of vitamin D for your immune system, for your kidney function, for your um, uh, blood sugar function, to your ability to detoxify and growing hair. Uh, I mean, there's just so many different benefits of vitamin D. So, I mean, honestly, I think the average person needs minimally 10,000 IUs per day. Um, there's many reasons for that, and I'll be doing a video on that as well because it's not just about, you know, one thing. It's you have to look at the whole picture. And as you age, the requirement goes up. If your skin's slightly darker or very dark, the need goes up. Um, if you're overweight, you need more. So there's so many different factors that uh, increase the requirement for uh, vitamin D. Wow. Well, Dr. Berg, I'm uh, 20,000 units of your stuff in the morning, vitamin D3, K2, and I take two at night, like you said, and I am not uh, developing any um, you know, sores or warts or anything like that. feel just absolutely terrific, so it must be good. Uh, listen, we've already heard from a nice gentleman, Viz, in India. We've got someone else coming into France. In addition to that, people are watching from the UK, Canada, Syria, Granada, Lithuania, Trinidad, Tobago, Hungary, Wales. South Africa, Sweden, Denmark, Aruba, the Philippines, once again, India, Israel, the Bahamas, Zambia, Germany, Algeria, Dubai, Taiwan, Switzerland, Japan, Honduras, Indonesia, France, Mexico, Chile, Chile, I guess is the, pronunci the uh, correct pronunciation, Russia, Egypt, uh, Guyana, Iceland. Wow, I haven't heard from them for a while, Peru, and all across the United States. So thanks, everybody around the world. Uh, for uh, watching. And I guess at this point, we might as well brag about the new uh, availability of products around the world. Dr. Berg, you want to touch on that? Yeah, that you can get them uh, now if you're in Russia or, or India or, or the Middle, Middle East, especially. Uh, you can just um, get them directly so you don't have to uh, pay for the expensive shipping. So there's some links down below if you're out of the U.S., that's terrific. DrBerg.com, everybody. Uh, a plethora of information, ordering instructions, zillions of videos, and so on. Why don't we kick off with the next true false doc? And here it is. All right, true or false? Vitamin, I see uh, you guys forgot the D. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, vitamin D receptors are in every single cell in your body. Is that true or false? Vitamin D. All right. The staff apologizes, but uh, you got the quiz question there. And why don't we uh, move on this time? Uh, we're going to go to France with Hassan. And uh, Hassan is uh, on with Dr. Berg right now. Hang on. I didn't unmute him. Just a minute, Hassan. Okay, you're all set to go. Hit him with your question. Hi, Dr. Berg. Thank Hello. you very much for all your, your information. It's amazing. Uh, I learn a lot. Uh, I have one question. I, w I went to keto last year and I lost a lot of uh, kilos. Uh, on the holidays, as everybody, I, I cheated. Uh, so I'm now coming back to keto again with a little bit of brain fog, uh, which I saw uh, one of your videos about. So I'm adding chia to my uh, nutrition. Uh, my question would be, um, I'm a pro chef. Um, hmm. I'm doing intermittent fasting, so it's uh, very complicated to keep track of all, everything. And the question would be, uh, if I taste a little bit 
uh, a little amount of carbs will it kick me out of keto wow okay, mashed potatoes for example wow wow you are definitely stuck between a rock and a hard place i'm sorry to hear that yeah. i mean uh, you're around food all day so this is uh this kind of throws off the tip that i was going to give everyone about uh just don't expose yourself to too much food right i guess you can't do that uh and of course you're tasting food to make sure um you know it really depends on quantity um you're going to have to try the smallest amount but here's the problem as soon as you start to taste um now you're going to want it about an hour later. <clears throat> so I think what I would do if I were you is try to work within your eating window. <laughs> and so you get home and then you fast and you're going to have to cope with that. But um, let's say if you work eight hours, try to do all your ta tasting within the shortest period of time, if you can do it. But yeah, that's um, the worst thing to start doing tasting and just small amounts is the carbs. And second worst thing is the protein. So if you can taste the fat, that would I'm be actually, better. But... Uh, sorry, I'm actually a private chef, so I can adapt my time. Oh, great. Uh, okay. Oh, it's easier. It's easier for me to do to do that. But, okay. Uh, I wanted to know if I if it will kick me out of keto if I taste some carbs. It, it really has to do with the quantity. So it you know if you have just a tiny little bit of something, it's going to kick you out for a short period of time, but it, you want to keep the quantities very, very small. But, you know, if you're having a very, very tiny bit of something, it's a, it's a minor thing. It's not going to be a big issue. But I will say, let's say you're doing wine tasting and you taste a half a glass of wine. That could easily bump you out of ketosis for at least 24 hours. Okay. So when we talk about tasting, we're talking about small tastes. Understood. Well, that's great. I recommend yeah. a teaspoon of cayenne powder every 30 seconds uh, until the urges go away. That should probably help out. Anyway, thanks for coming to us from France, uh, Hassan. And we'd, as always, love to hear back from people and to see what kind of progress they made later on. And yeah, so I can imagine a chef from France. That would, I would like to have you fly out to my house. That would be, I, can, I cannot only imagine, it must be incredible. Oh, no kidding. To be able to be a <laughs> cook at that level in France. Wow, you may have heard of this. I will I will definitely take you up on that. <laughs> That's wonderful. You may have heard of this, Dr. Berg, but in Great Falls, Virginia, Chez Francois, Robert's Chez Francois is this fabulous French restaurant. And you have to call Thursday night exactly at 4 p.m. to get a reservation a month and a half away. And if you don't call right then, get a busy wow. signal, you're out. But anyway, so just a great uh, representation of French food. I think Hassan would probably tell us uh, Truly what it's like. Anyway, I digress, and the audience, as usual, is right on these questions today. And it asks, true, false, vitamin receptors are in, oops, every, is that the right question? Vitamin D receptors. That's what it was. Vitamin D receptors, boy, uh, are, in, um, are in every cell of your body. And the uh, audience suggested 80% of them say it's true and 20% say it's false. You know, um, I didn't think it was true, but it is true. It's in actually every cell. And so, uh, which is actually fascinating to have that much influence of vitamin D. It's way, way, way more important than we thought. This vitamin D is not just for your bones. It's not just for your immune system. You got vitamin D receptors in the liver, the kidney, the colon, the hair, the skin. Um, I, I'm releasing a video on it and... Um, what does that mean? It means that given the fact that the majority of the population is deficient in vitamin D, it means that they're in a big in trouble and they're going to have to uh, make sure um, as an, a really important action is to make sure you get enough vitamin D. And so that way uh, you'd be surprised how many things might clear up that you might not even think are connected to vitamin D. So the importance of vitamin D is just, is really, really high up there. And so, um, because it's, we need it in so many different ways. So I'm going to be releasing a video on that uh, coming up very soon. You think that's a recently new phenomenon? I mean, I guess we're not in the sun anymore, right? Everybody used to be out there, you know, uh, pulling up potatoes yeah, and so on. Yeah, that's one big problem is we, we don't go outside anymore. I mean, 
uh, you know, you look down my neighborhood, there's no kids out. Like where, where do they, where are they? Yeah, no kidding. The little devices like the rest of it. I'm just as guilty. I'm on my phone all the time. Anyway, here's the next uh, true false question, Dr. Berg. Okay. All right. Salt cravings are an indicator of excessive stress. Is that true or false? Another true false, folks, to go up. Let's go to, uh, we've been, I've been neglecting um, social media. Noreen from YouTube, can I take Tudka if I have low blood pressure? Sure. There's no, uh, there's, there's only a couple indications about Tudka, which is a, which is a type of a bile salt that you should avoid. Like for example, um, if you have hyperthyroidism, okay, the thi- that graves, like the thyroid is working too much, <clears throat> you don't want to take a bile salt because bile salts help the conversion of thyroid hormones. So it's going to speed up your thyroid. If you have a slow thyroid, yes, you want to take bile salts for sure. Um, if you have diarrhea, you don't want to take any bile salts. Why? Because bile salts can help the movement of things through your body and even if you have too much, create diarrhea. So, um, but if you have constipation, you should be taking it. So um, other than that, I think it's going to be totally fine. All right. Well, uh, uh, Tamela from Facebook, and this is an important question. I think my daughter is diabetic and pregnant. What's the best meal plan for her? Well, I tell you, it's very, very important to get on healthy keto immediately right now if you're pregnant because you don't want to have any blood sugar issues including diabetes when you're pregnant because the baby um, potentially could is not going to get all the nutrients because what comes along with diabetes is insulin resistance so that's going to resist also the absorption of nutrition and so there's a higher likelihood of a child developing blood sugar issues if you you yourself are a diabetic but if you're a t- diabetic type 2 um, you can reverse it. There's um, Verda Health. You should look up their research. Um, it's a medical group. They have um, have the research that healthy keto can reverse diet type two diabetes. So you just need to cut out the carbs and not snack so much. So that's that. That would be the first step, and have. Um, don't don't try to skimp out on a synthetic prenatal. Get something that is food based, something that's healthy, because it's a critical time in your life when you're um, pregnant with the development of this baby. Um, I mean, just think about this one thing. It, let's say, for example, a pregnant woman is deficient in vitamin D. Um, do you realize that they potentially could increase the risk of scoliosis, kyphosis? That's hunchback. Lordosis, which is a swayback, um, lowered immune system, flat feet, overbite, underbite, dental malformation, um, cavities, um, the need for braces. I mean, all sorts of things could happen that could be easily prevented if they have the right information. So most important time to, to get the right nutrition is when you're pregnant and also when that baby's young and they're developing, uh, having the right breast milk, I mean, versus like, you know, not breastfeeding, you know, doing um, just the formulas, which I, is this not good? Wow. Well, uh, this is sort of uh, good. Uh, Carla Cook from YouTube said she weighed 325 pounds before her bypass surgery. She's lost 155 pounds. She says she feels great. Uh, doesn't have a bad heart or a fatty liver, doesn't go on beyond that. But maybe I remember you talking about before, Dr. Berg, it's a little hard to absorb some of the necessary nutrients. What any advice for her on a diet after she's done this fantastic journey to weight loss? Yeah, it alters the um, the absorption of certain nutrients. So really want to make sure if you had a gastric bypass that you're, you're getting the trace minerals, okay, and make sure you're getting enough, uh, the, the, bile salt to absorb the fat soluble vitamins like a d e and k k1 and k2 because uh once you have that bypass um the bile production is lessened and uh on top of that you don't have the full surface area absorption so um definitely you want to add more nutrients that you could commonly be deficient in if you had a gastric bypass 
Well, good luck. That's a, a quite a journey, and that's wonderful. And I'm sure the 155 pounds less feels amazing. So uh, Jenny from Facebook uh, doesn't talk about weight loss, but she does have a fatty liver. Any uh, ideas for Jenny? If she does healthy keto and intermittent fasting within two weeks, she can get rid of up to 50% of that fat off her liver. I mean, that's impressive. I've done a video recently on a fatty liver, and there's I, I walk you through what to do. There are certain um, nutritional things that you can take that will help you. One would be apple cider vinegar. Um, but think about this. Um, if you go on a low-carb diet, and you will start to force your body to tap into the stored fat in your liver and start mobilizing this fat so you can use it. Um, but if you're going to keep your carbs high, then it's very likely that the fat will never go away. I mean, it's just going to, it's just stuck there. So you need to get on this diet immediately. All right. And boy, that's encouraging. A couple of weeks to see a dramatic difference is, uh, is very, very exciting. Uh, let's see. And speaking of videos we've seen first, uh, where did she go? Alice on Facebook. Hi, Dr. Bird. What is your take on excessive oral mucus that is not responding to treatment? I think I saw a video about that recently, Doc. Um, anytime a mucus, um, there's usually an infection going on. Uh, there's, uh, and you can take some natural type of antibiotics like garlic, clove, thyme, sage, um, oregano oil, awesome, awesome blends, wormwood um, extract. All these are great blends as a natural antibiotic. Uh, the other thing you can um, take as far as food is uh, radishes. If you can find the Spanish black radish at the grocery store and put that in your salad, you're going to find that will be the best. It actually tends to pull mucus and uh, clean you up. But there's usually... Uh, you know, we've got to make sure your diet is good because if you're doing higher sugar, you're going to just feed these microbes and it's going to produce more mucus. Interesting, interesting. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> uh, oh, here's interesting, and I had a question about it uh, spawned from her. Sean YouTube, what's your take on sea moss? Would we benefit from adding it to your diet? And I'm just curious, generally stuff that sort of sways under the sea, is the sea safe? I mean, is it filled with toxins? What's going on out there? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to find uh, certain parts of the uh, oceans that are that are clean, that are pristine, that are less polluted. Um, so sea moss is a type of seaweed, um, and you want to make sure it comes from a good place. Um, I have I'm not biased in my own sea kelp, but it comes from Iceland, which is probably one of the last places that it is pristine and healthy and organic and clean. But um, the nutrients in sea moss and sea kelp are virtually identical. So uh, I know sea moss has become very popular, but it's just a type of sea, a sea vegetable, basically. Wow. Peter from YouTube, is it possible to remineralize my teeth? How would I do that? Is that some kind of fad? I've never heard of that. Yeah, you just want to make sure that you're consuming foods high in minerals uh, from the sea. Uh, in the form of like shellfish, really good idea for shellfish, but don't be selfish. Uh, but uh, you can also do fish with salmon and organ meats, but and even sub substitute not just with minerals, but with the trace minerals. Um, so you can start to put the minerals back. But let's say you have softening of the bone, which is um, osteomalacia or osteopenia, which is a pre osteoporosis or osteoporosis. <clears throat> to get that bone back, the effort it takes a lot of times is a lot more than you think. So it could take some years, up to six or even seven years, to remineralize these bones if you have a real serious osteoporosis. And also realize you don't just need the minerals, you need the vitamins to make the bone solid, like vitamin K2, as well as vitamin D. So you need the whole package. Wow. Well, that's encouraging. Uh, let's go to quiz question number three, which asks another true false craving salt is an indicator of excessive stress. And our audience, 70% say it's true. 30% say false. It is true. Yeah. When you're, when you're stressed, uh, the requirement for salt goes up. 
uh, the adrenals do help regulate the salt. And so um, just think about, uh, I don't know if this ever have happened to you, Steve, but let's say you had a, a day of stress and you went home and do you ever feel like you need to crave on, you, you need to eat some potato chips or salty something? It's happened. And then when you eat this salt, you're like, okay, good. I feel a little bit better now. I feel, I feel better versus putting a salt in your water and drink that. You probably wouldn't do that. But people tend to crave salt and because the adrenals are, are needing some more of this salt, the sodium. I mean, think about even a, a sodium deficiency. What is the main symptom? Weakness. So um, I think the best thing to do, because you don't want to get your salt from chips, is to salt the food a little bit more and or put some in some water and make sure you have a high quality sea salt that will help you with um, these uh, salt cravings. But if you crave salt, definitely consume more salt. That's not something you should avoid because our bodies need a good amount of salt more than you might think. All righty. Uh, so anyway, Cindy from Facebook, uh, what can I do for extreme insomnia? Didn't say how old she is. And it's starting to happen to me more as I age. Uh, there's a couple of real simple things you can do. You could take a, a nutritional yeast or B1 with vitamin D before bed. That will help. Uh, the other thing is to uh, find out the source of your stress and fix that. And the last tip I'm going to have for sleep is to do some type of physical work even more than exercise, if you do physical work, it, it actually kind of releases stress and it gets your attention off the stress and it can really help sleep. I found physical work works better than exercise for sleep. So get outside and start to do some work around the house or even inside, but outside would be the best thing, especially in the winter, right, Steve? Absolutely. Well, you know, speaking of the winter, uh, Gania from Facebook, why am I craving sweets when the weather turns cold? Well, there's a, it's probably a, la a combination of lack of vitamin D and also you can't get out there as much. And so you're in, inside and that does affect uh, cortisol. If you're low in vitamin D too, your cortisol will go up and cortisol is a, it releases uh, sugar. And then if you're low in vitamin D, your sleep cycles probably aren't going to be as good as during the um, um, summer. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of reasons, but I would say sleep, vitamin D, and maybe stress, those, those three things. Um, and also, if you're in, indoors a lot more, think about how much reminders you have of food versus you're outside, you're doing something, you forget about it. Wow, that's interesting. Well, our social media moderator came over to, uh, it was kind of him to say that there's a lot of people asking about tinnitus. So why don't we broach that subject? Tinnitus, uh, ringing in the ears. Uh, I've done three videos on this. And if the technique one, um, A does not work, try the technique B or the recommendations for certain nutrition. I showed you an actual there's a technique that you can do for ringing the ears. I should probably do an updated video, but um, sometimes uh, you know you have multiple sources of of ringing the ear. One would be um, a B1 deficiency, but you need to take a fat soluble. It's called benfotamine because it's a neurological problem from from blood sugars. Another reason would be your you have some mucus in the inner ear, so the eustachian tube is plugged, and you have to clean that out with Spanish black radish. You can get those as tablets or as a radish and it pulls mucus. So there's other causes that you need to identify, but um, I would watch my videos on that to get the full information. All right. <clears throat> Over to YouTube. Uh, this might be a common question. Where can we talk to you in person? Well, Dr. Berg doesn't have a sort of physical practice anymore. And of course, you can uh, go online and uh, sign up or do the application to get online like a lot of these folks if that's considered in person, uh, but let's see uh, well, that, what else. That's, that's why I, I do these, um, these questions, these live shows to answer your questions. So um, get, just take a number, and then if you needed my cell phone, I'll put that down, and I'm just kidding. I'm not going <laughs> to give that cell phone. I'll, I'll take care of that for you, Doc. Okay, you can just call Steve then. Right. Okay, that's great. Now, this gentleman's or person, SN. So, SN, why don't you post a question here, and I'll look for it and make sure uh, you know that um, Dr. Berg can comment on it. 
let's see, vitamin D at bedtime is worse for your sleep cycles? Well, I haven't found that. Anyway, uh, Sarah wants to know, or is commenting that vitamin D uh, is not good for your sleep cycles. Uh, have you ever heard um, such a thing? No, it actually is very, very beneficial for your sleep cycles. It won't keep you up at night. Um, it'll actually help you sleep. So it's involved in um, jet lag. Uh, so if you have jet lag, take it. And if you, if you want to kind of reset your sleep cycles, take some vitamin D. Now, you might think, well, wait a second. If I take vitamin D, that's uh, similar to the sun, sun coming in. And so the sun's going to wake me up because melatonin is stimulated by darkness. Now, that doesn't, doesn't pan out. It's the... Um, you're, you're probably thinking of melatonin, which is a whole other topic. But vitamin D itself um, is not going to keep you up. It's going to help um, stress. It's going to help um, you relax because it's going to increase more uh, vitamin, I mean, calcium. And um, I found it, it's great for sleep, but you'll have a much better sleep if you take it right before bed. Try it out and see for yourself. Wonderful. Okay, Glean with a G from YouTube. Is keto good for someone with hypo? Yes, hypothyroidism and PCOS. Especially, um, it's going to help uh, both conditions, especially PCOS, because it's reducing insulin. And that's really, high insulin is what's really behind the PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or disorder. Wow. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh, here's an interesting question, Doc. Why don't you read this for our audience? Okay. What is the best nutrient for dizziness when you stand up too fast? Well, that's interesting. I had a, a little heart scare, some arrhythmia, and they put me on blood thinners or uh, uh, metaprolol, and it's for a variety of stuff. But I got up once on the from my bed, raced into the bathroom, and went down. I mean, I, I lost enough wow. consciousness to actually bang off the floor, so I'm familiar with that. Of course, that's drug-induced. Mm. So uh, anyway, yeah. let's see what the audience says. Uh, Dr. Berg, by the way, your um, battery just died out. Um, so Okay, so we... let me go with the plan B here. I have okay. a plan, and let's see if that works. Wow, that's unbelievable. He pulled the emergency handle. Yeah, if you can just turn that uh, away from your... Yeah, let me just push bit. this away here, and I'll just turn this camera here. And... Folks, don't look at the man behind oh, the green it's curtain. Still, it's still all right, that's uh, what <laughs> that looks. You know what okay. I'm gonna do? Let me, so, Steve. Let's take some. Uh, let's let's take some calls. Uh, there's some people in the green one room that we need to get to as well, right? Okay, good. And look what I just did to your shot. See, we kind of tighten that up a little bit. And let's do that. We're gonna go over to uh, Mario, who is in uh, Tampa. And I tell you what, wait till you get a load of this guy's voice. He said hello to me and shattered his coffee table. Mario, you're on with Dr. <laughs> Bird. Good morning, Dr. Byrne. How are you? Good morning. Great. Good, good. Um, I'm actually curious to know what your answer was about the uh, dizziness, though. Could you answer that real quick? Yeah. Yeah. The dizziness is when you stand too fast, um, what's happening is your, your adrenal glands are not adapting to this gravitational stress. So there's a problem with the autonomic nervous system, which is uh, it controls homeostasis, so your ability to adapt to your environment. So what you have, the best remedy for that is vitamin B1. And you can get that through nutritional yeast as well. Um, but yeah, that's the absolute best remedy for a weak autonomic nervous system that you stand up, you're like, whoa, I'm dizzy. Like, um, now, it could also be low blood pressure, but not as common, in which case you'd add more salt, which we already know salt is good for your adrenals. But B1 is the best one to take on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yep. Well, thank you for this platform. I really appreciate you allowing us to come on here and ask these questions. Um, I also had a health scare. I'm, I'm also doing keto and I've been doing it now for about four, four and a half months. Uh, and I've lost 40 pounds and wow. I've been uh, uh, watching a lot of your videos. So I appreciate that. Um, I just did my blood work about a week ago and I'm just reviewing all the numbers here. And I'm really interested in buying some of your products and my concern is buying something I don't need versus something I do need. Um, and a lot of the numbers that stood out on my blood results were, you know, my LDL, my triglycerides, and my calcium 
uh, surprisingly was a slightly elevated. And my, my A1C has went down, which is a good sign. Um, so I just wanted to know from my interest in products was your D3 and K2, um, your nutritional yeast, and your cruciferous uh, supplement that you have because I don't eat enough vegetables because I work from home all day and I'm not able to get that many vegetables in my, in my diet. So um, based on that, um, is it okay to take your D3 and, or excuse me, your D3, K2 and your cruciferous supplement along with uh, the nutritional yeast all at once? Yeah, you can do that. There's just a couple little points I want to bring up. If you have a true hypercalcemia state where there's too much calcium in the blood, you maybe want to hold off with the vitamin D until that's under control or you make sure that's really the problem. That's the only point I want to bring up about that. Um, you got to find out why your calcium is high. Okay. Um, I mean, is there this one thing you might want to check is your parathyroid gland. Just double check that. Mm -hmm. But um, because what's going to happen, you're going to take vitamin D, it's going to increase more calcium in the blood, and maybe that's not the best idea. Right. Uh, however, based on the cholesterol, triglyceride, the LDL mm -hmm. point that you brought up, one thing that I think might be really good for you is the um, the gallbladder formula because that, that really keeps the liver um, keeping that excess cholesterol clean, helping it flow through the liver, helping a lot of issues with um, the flow of cholesterol and fats through the liver and the bile ducts. Okay. And do you recommend that I take the CAC test to see any calcium levels at my age? Boy, that would, that absolutely. It's not an expensive test, but it, the calcium, I'm sorry, it's called the calcium coronary artery scan or test is the best um, measurement for um, mortality of all causes because it kind of tells you what's happening to the inside of your arteries. It's a, it's a, test that measures the calcium in the artery and you want it to be zero. And if it's really, really high, it'll really give you an idea of where things are at. So you can take the right actions because let's say you don't know what's going on in your artery and it's really bad and you just not, you're not making the changes you need to, then you're going to be in trouble. Uh, but if it, if it comes out low, then at least, you know, like, wow, I'm doing, I'm doing some good things. But even if it comes up high, there's things you can do to bring it down and improve things. But when the inside of the artery becomes inflamed, um, it starts to form a band-aid of cholesterol and calcium deposits. So uh, okay. very important test. So the gallbladder formula that you have along with the uh, nutritional yeast is and the cruciferous supplement is okay to take? Yeah, that would be a good combination for you because it's going to really target that uh, – your liver, the bile ducts, and the B vitamins for a lot of different reasons. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's great. Thanks so much, uh, Mario. And I hope you get into voiceovers or something. That's a, don't want to waste that voice. That's amazing. Uh, Manisha from Facebook, my husband is not diabetic or does not have hypertension, but his urine has high levels of protein, uh, and she's worried about him. Well, <clears throat> high protein can definitely be a kidney problem. Um, but the first thing I would check to make sure is you're having, are you eating too much protein in the diet? Because sometimes that can create more protein in the urine. And the urine becomes dark and foamy because how the protein interacts with oxygen. So um, I did a video recently on the kidney. And the cool thing about the kidney is, you can reverse kidney damage if you get it in time. And one of the most important nutrients for the kidney is potassium. Having enough potassium, it, it protects the kidney. There's so many people have this false idea that, oh, yeah, potassium is bad for the kidney. No, it's not. It's protective. Uh, you know, okay, if you have stage five kidney failure, okay, get with your doctor. Make sure that you're um, taking the right things. But there's some new emerging data that shows to even with advanced kidney disease that having potassium foods um, may help you. So watch my video on that. Do the research. And um, that way, you know, let's, let's handle this protein in the kidney by finding out what's really causing it. And I would start with the basics, the diet. 
Makes sense. Okay, so here we are with uh, quiz or quiz question number four, which asks, "What is the best nutrient for dizziness when standing up too fat, too fast?" I know uh, Mario was interested in that, and let's uh, see what the audience said. Uh, so, fifty-five percent say A B vitamin deficiency. Fifteen percent say a salt deficiency. Fifteen percent say potassium deficiency, and the other fifteen percent say an electrolyte deficiency. Any winners? Yeah, it's mostly going to be B1, um, but it could be an electrolyte, but um, but most of the time it's going to be B1, like I said. Uh, so um, B1 handles that adaptation to stress. So anything stress, whether it's feeling stressed, nervous tension, anxiety, or just getting up or uh, and feeling dizzy or climbing stairs and you get out of breath easily or climbing stairs and your legs are really, really heavy. I remember even as a kid uh, feeling that symptom, and I had no idea that I had that um, that deficiency. I wish I did because I could have easily handled it. But um, you know, the question is, how do you become B one deficient by consuming too much sugar and refined carbohydrates? Wow. Well, uh, speaking of symptoms, Pam has some. She wants to know what the best thing to do for reducing her brain fog would be. Well, the best thing is to get get on keto, um, and then that way you're you're running on ke- uh, ketones, not glucose, and that's going to affect your brain the most. You're going to feel clear, focused. You're going to concentrate. You can do some really cool things in the transition to speed things up, like MCT oil it turns into ketones, and your brains love ketones. So um, those are some quick things to do. Uh, I didn't know that, you know, a long time ago. So I was still on a high carb diet and trying to fix my brain fog with nutrients didn't work, did not work. It's really uh, the diet. Wow. Well, I tell you what, there's a lot of people, it's like a fad. They're getting their gallbladder ripped out. And uh, Treasure Johnson is one of them on Facebook. And he wants to know if it's going to affect his absorption of vitamin A and E. Well, think about this. What does the, what does the gallbladder do? It concentrates the bile up to like seven times. So without a gallbladder, we don't have the concentration of the bile. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, now we have diluted bile. So can you really absorb vitamin A, D, E, uh, K1, K2, and omega-3 fatty acids with diluted bile? Um, Maybe not, especially if it's um, now you don't have that, um, even the amounts. We have a, a loss of concentration. We have a loss of the amounts because you're just getting now a trickling effect from your liver down to the tube into the small intestine. We don't have this, this contraction of the gallbladder because there's no gallbladder in there. So um, it makes total sense to me that you're just not going to have enough and you're not going to have the concentration. So you are going to be deficient and you're not going to be able to break down this uh, this fat to the the level that you need for the the lipase to do its job and and um, does help you break it down so you can get 100 percent absorption so you know it might not happen right away but you might start noticing these deficiencies and vitamin a you're going to notice like you're driving at night and you go oh, man i can't see like i used to uh, when i'm driving so you can't see in the dark that's a classic vitamin a or sinus issues or let's say uh, D deficiency, you have back pain or bone pain or muscle aches more than usual. But if your low back hurts, you should just try some vitamin D. It, I mean, if it's low, if that's what's causing it, within an hour, your back pain will completely go away. Um, I'm, I have firsthand knowledge of that, Steve. Wonderful. Well, I gulp a lot of that stuff and my back doesn't hurt, but I'll tell you who does hurt. And that's Zulfifa from YouTube. She wants to know an advice on the horrors of migraine pain. How can she reduce that? Yeah, there's, there could be a couple different reasons. You can actually check the, uh, if it's on the right side of your head, I would, I would watch my videos in the gallbladder that could cause a, a trigger. It. it could also be low sodium. That's one cause. Another thing that I found uh, that helps migraines is to um, improve the liver with something like turmeric. If you take, uh, they have a turmeric uh, type of a tea 
or a, a supplement. Um, and you can actually start drinking that even if it's hot. And many, many times that helps to handle the liver issues and which, which is also connected to migraines. So there, there's a whole series of things you can try. I, w- I would watch my video on that though. Cause I have like five videos on migraines. Wow. Well, that's encouraging. Okay. Final question for the day. It's another true falser. Here you go, Dr. Berg. All right. So liver spots really come from a liver problem. Is that true or false? Hmm. Okay. Dig into that uh, audience. And I tell you, why don't we go to Casey? He has been uh, really a patient on here. He's been banging on the screen. Hey out there. No, he hasn't really. He's been very patient, but in, in any event, here he is. Hey, good morning, Dr. Berg. Thank you all so good much morning. for uh, taking taking my question. Um, it's, um, uh, I've, I've been on uh, intermittent fasting and keto for uh, about five months, uh, seen some tremendous success, uh, feel great, uh, both mentally and physically. Um, my question revolves around intermittent fasting, and um, it's real simple. Uh, Currently, right now, my eating window uh, is uh, between 3 and 9 p.m., and that's, that's mostly because of a uh, uh, work schedule. So um, there, there's, there's one or two things, that I, or three things that I don't like about that, and, and mainly it's because I'm eating so close to bedtime uh, mm. for dinner. Um, so my question is, uh, what, are the, what are the benefits or the or, or, or any issues with um, possibly changing changing that schedule from lunch and dinner to like breakfast and lunchtime and then skipping skipping dinner? Yeah, good question. Um, the advantage of doing it the way you're doing it is that you have the the momentum of sleep because you're fast, you're not eating, you're sleeping, and you have this nice momentum. You can go right into it, um, which is somewhat easier. Um, then having that first meal and then kind of breaking up the fast. Um, if you take a look at the autonomic nervous system, it has a flight or fight mechanism. And then you have the other system is called rest and digest. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you do tend to eat in the evenings, unless it bothers you, it may actually help you your sleep with some people anyway, to actually eat later before you go to sleep, especially if you fasted all day long up to three o'clock. So I'm not opposed to eating before bed if, unless it bothers you. Um, But uh, if you could work over time to squeeze the, the the nine, the the three o'clock to the nine and squeeze those together a little bit more um, to, if you get even a four hour window, that would be even more awesome. But um, that's really the most important thing is like, is to even more than the timing, it's like the, how long you fast. Right. So if you can somehow push that three up to four and five, or I don't know, push to Mm -hmm. nine backwards. I don't know if you can with your schedule, but um, that's, that's what I would, I would focus on mainly, but, do you feel bad or do you feel any negative things when you eat before bed? Well, I, I would, I would just say that my concern is, is that, um, I'm eating right before bed, I'd say about an hour or two before bed. Um, and you know, generally when I'm, when I'm eating, I feel like I'm feeding myself some energy and mm. that my body may be, uh, you know, not, not, it, it may be working while it's sleeping, like to digest the food Whereas as opposed to, you know, getting up early in the morning, uh, you know, hitting the gym, uh, eating, um, and, and then doing, and then, and that actually would, would, would allow my, my window to close down to four hours because I can mm-hmm. eat like say at 9am and then again at like 1pm and then go to work, uh, you know, the rest of the day or what have you. And, and then, you know, recycle. And then another thing is, is that I, uh, you know, once or twice a week, I actually do a 24 hour fast. So I really, I really, yeah, I really try to um, stay pretty disciplined on that. And the, the, 
the the three to nine window is only like that because unfortunately I'm I'm working at those times and I just can't you know I just can't stop to eat. So I think that's I think I think it, I think it's a great idea to test it out to see how you do. But try it out. I like uh, get up in the morning, have your first meal, and then try, and four hours later have the second meal. Um, and then I just want to say one last thing: when you know when you eat food. Um, it's the under parasympathetic control. So the more that you relax, you'll have the, you have better digestion. <clears throat> the more you exercise and you're kind of under stress, it's less digestion. So it just, that's just another factor to look at, but I think it's a minor thing, but yeah, definitely try it in the morning. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And then four hours later, yeah, that, that, well, that'd be good. Thank you so much for what you do. You re- I, I, I can tell you, you do a lot of good in this world, and we appreciate you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I tell you, you're a great representative of Amarillo, Texas. So uh, thanks for joining us today and for your patience, Casey. I know you hung around a long time, uh, and we're kind of getting close to the end. So why don't we, and we're also also proud that we got through all our quiz questions today. And this is another true false. Liver spots really come from liver problems. And I think I'm going to join the audience and not believe in it. Instead of like saying heartburn comes from your heart. But maybe you'll surprise us, Doc. Uh, so 100% said no way to liver spots come from my liver. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's, a, it's, not, a liver, it's not a liver problem. Uh, aging spots are called too. And that, that's coming from a vitamin C deficiency. This is why um, you see all these creams out there that they're all vitamin C based for the aging spots. And you, you put them topically on your, your hand and they go away or your body and they go away. So it's a, it's a vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C, if you, see my, uh, if you haven't seen my video recently on lemons, check it out. But you want to take the whole lemon. I do this every day. Not just the juice, the whole lemon. Seeds peel, everything, stick in the blender with a glass of water, put a little drops of stevia or, of course, my electrolyte powder. And then what you do is you blend that for about 45 seconds. Drink that down. You talk about vitamin C on steroids. It's like five times more vitamin C complex if you have the peel and the outer part and the seeds. So you're getting a lot of bioflavonoids. You're getting the other factors that you're going to feel real good, and it's going to help um, your skin. So you don't even need to take um, something topically for these so-called liver spots, you can take it orally and, and watch what happens to your skin. Things start clearing up because it's a very powerful antioxidant. But um, another good source of vitamin C is sauerkraut. So that's it's probably way even more than lemons, but um, if you have lemon juice from a bottle, you're not getting any true vitamin C because it's pasteurized. So you need it fresh and blended immediately or else you're not getting that vitamin C complex. Well, I tell you what, Dr. Burke, I think it's worth us staying on the air a little bit longer because this worries me. Andrea from YouTube uh, often experiencing bright flashing lights across my eyes. And I had that once and my ophthalmologist was worried about a detached retina. So anyway, what do you, what do you think she should do? I hope she goes see somebody. Yeah, I'd get a test because there could be some problems with, uh, with the retina. And uh, just so you know, um, going on low carb um, can really greatly help the retina, including benthotamine, which is all, you're supporting the vascular system to the nervous system when you do that. The benthotamine is a type of B vitamin, um, but it's a fat soluble, so it's really good. It decreases the complications from diabetes, but uh, people that are on a high carb diet have problems with the retina, with the macula, with the lens. So they get cataracts and glaucoma and the diabetic retinopathy. And so the eyes are uh, greatly improved when you go on keto and you do intermittent fasting, especially, especially if you have those floaters in the eye as well. Um, but if there's an injury to the eye, like I have had several injuries to the eye, there's a really good remedy it's from standard process called oculotrophin PMG. You take one of those before bed, and boy, if you had like a scratch on your eye or some any any problem with the eye, like within 10 minutes, it's just like it's starting to starting to heal up. It feels better. Don't ask me how it works. 
uh, but it does work. Oculotrope and PMG. On that note, I really appreciate all of your great questions and the great comments on all the YouTube videos. So I'll be releasing some new ones and uh, every day. And so I will see you guys next Friday, 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. Have a great weekend. Oh,